Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel with me Lala. Today we will play uh, Choices, The Royal Romance. Ini udah book ke-1 chapter 18. Sebenarnya aku mau ngelanjutin yang memories, tapi diamond aku kurang. <laughs> Oke, langsung aja. Chapter 18, To Be a Princess. The coronation ball continues. Can you sustain your fairy tale rise or will you sleep at this crucial moment? Hmm. Will I? Wait, wait, wait. My sound is too loud. Okay. I don't know, but this look pretty good. Better see if we can get away with it. You and Hannah abscond with your dessert, logging as you find a private bench in the hallway to enjoy them. Yum! Mmm! Afterwards, you both sit, sit back contently. That was perfect. I'm glad we did that. Me too. Ah, <sighs> of course. I suppose that means we are running, we are running out of time tonight aren't we? Yeah, we are. Lala, if this was yours, your last night and you could do anything, what would you do? Mm. I spend time with my friend, I guess. Like what you did. Yeah, I guess. I spent my last day as well. Hannah rests her empty plate on the bench. We should get you back. You really should be seen. You real. You really should be seen in the ballroom socializing before the coronation truly starts. Udah lama nggak ngomong bahasa Inggris bebel rasanya. I suppose so. But I wanted to thank you for tonight, for everything. Our time this past few months really meant a lot. Packet list, you have Hana complete her packet list with her friend. Hana? Alright, that's all. Come on. Oh, Hana will be gone. And now, I suppose I should let Prince Liam know that I'll be leaving. Hana hugs you. But I'll see you later tonight, my dear. As you and Hana separate, Kiara and Penelope approach you. Lady Lala! We want you, we want to con congratulate you on coming this far. It was no small fit. Uh, oh, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed the ball so far. Uh, I've waited so long for this day, as we all have. Though you must be the most excited, Lala. Prince Liam might choose you. It's exciting, to say the least. To think that my future could widely change in an instant? If only we were as fortunate. Uh, I'm sure something good will come your way. What are you doing next? Once the wedding is over, I'll split my time between court and my family estate. It'll be nice to finally, to finally see my poodle again. again. Penelope, uh... I bet your poodles are extra cute and fluffy. Yeah, just uh, say something nice. They are. Poodles are the best, I mean. I respect the other breeder, but I connect with poodles on an emotional level. Uh, it's great that you'll see them again. Oh, I know. I bet they have missed me. Uh, what about you, Kiara? Once the wedding is over, I'll stay at court for a little while before searching for a position with the Vorange Ministry. Ah, uh, Kiara! Oh, uh, how many languages do you actually speak? I've only ever heard English and French. Those are the dominant regional language. Uh, but I want to hear you speak another language. Couldn't that, mi amiga? Zeevelis? I think so. Good. Uh, aku kira dia mau ngomong 
kayak kalimat really man really man we shall visit some of the other ladies before the coronation ceremony begins it was nice talking to you lady lala good luck tonight thanks you look around the room searching for your friends you spot Dre heading out the door alone i wonder what Drake was going to say earlier this could be my only opportunity to talk to him alone and find out this is your last chance to have a moment alone with Drake in this book i guess let's go follow Drake. You find Drake sitting at the deserted bar station. Can we talk? Drake signed and gestured to the empty seat next to him. Go ahead, you know, I'm always willing to talk to you. Drake looked back at the empty bar. What's a guy gotta do to get a drink around here? Well, lucky for you, in addition to being a waitress, I took a turn or two at the bar whenever the occasion called for it. You slide behind the bar and pick up a cocktail shaker. You're gonna make me a drink? The best you ever had. Now let's get started. First, we need something sweet. Peach liquor. You could use something to sweeten you up. This is going to be interesting. Next, something down to earth. Orange juice. Alright. And then we top it off with a double shot of whiskey. Now you're talking. You know, you could have just poured me whiskey on the rock and I would have been a happy man. And where will be the fun in that? Now, are you ready for the final result? Never been more ready. And it over. Drag the ship. Well, Drake love your drink, okay? I could get used to this. You pour yourself the same drink and sit down next to Drake. Don't blame bartender. Uh, last customer didn't even leave a tip. Sorry, must have left my wallet in my other fancy jacket. Speaking of which, you look handsome. I mean, I know, I'm no Prince Liam. Uh, what? <laughs> Uh, you clean up good, Rick. Thanks. And here I thought you said you only dress up if there was someone you wanted to impress. Yeah, well, I guess maybe I found someone worth impressing. A Drake? If only for tonight. Drake takes another ship. Anyway, I'm glad we were able to have a few minutes out here together. Thanks for the drink, Royal. Hey, you're always calling me by my last name, and I don't even know yours. And you consider us to be friends? I do, so tell me. What is it with you and prying into my life? Can you just let a man keep a few walls up? I think we are a little bit beyond this game by now. Come on, tell me. You must know it's Walker. Walker, huh? I guess I better start calling you Walker. Oh, no. What's wrong, Walker? Turnabout's affair came. Calling you by my last name is my thing. Too bad, Walker. <laughs> Fine, I guess I can start calling you Lala. You just sound weird now to hear you say that. See? Okay, okay, Drake it is. Drake take a long sip, sip of his drink. I wanted to ask, it seemed like you were about to say something earlier. I was going to say that I was wrong, no matter what happened tonight. Crown or not crown, engage or not, you're still you. Weren't you just telling me how I'm one of them now? I was being an idiot. I should not have said that. I knew it as soon as the word were out of my mouth. You didn't deserve that. Drake. It's okay. No, it isn't. I was out of line. It just... 
In that moment, when I saw you at the ball, you reminded me of Savannah, how she was the last night we went out with the nobles at that party. She was so happy in her fancy gown, with her hair all done up, so hopeful, she lit up the entire room. She really believed she made it, that she was one of them, and I still don't even know what happened to her, what made her relief, but it was bad. It was something that broke her. I'll never forget how this devastated she looked the day before she disappeared. She looked helpless, like she did given up. And when I look at you tonight, I couldn't stop myself from imagining the same thing happening to you. This place seems shiny and wonderful, but the truth is, it breaks people royal. I don't ever want to see you broken. Drake. I'm sorry about Safana. Thanks. I like. I know she will have liked you. Hell, Royal. My life would have been so much easier if I could have just hit you. I. Drake sighed and looked down. What were you thinking just now? I was thinking if this is the last time I'm going to be alone with you before you're an engaged woman, I'd be a damn fool not to kiss you. Uh, Drake? Uh, we can't. You're right, of course. Hell, I'm sorry, Royal. Yeah, man. Seem like I cannot stop saying stupid things when you're around. Just then the door to the palace burst open and you hear a group of party goers come out to the bar. Where's the bartender? Morgan Bench! Look like the party for us. Untung aja gak ciuman. It's not really a night where you can get any privacy, is it? You better head back inside. What about you? I'll be out here until... It's time. Leaving Drake along at the bar, you head back inside the palace. Inside the ballroom, you spot Petrin and Maxwell hustling over you. Uh, Maxwell? Petrin? Is something wrong? We found something. We intercept a courier with a letter addressed to you. Uh, Petrin, uh, thank you. I do have well on to it until after the coronation, but it say it's urgent. Uh, urgent? You take the folded letter and open it. Examine the letter. You read the letter. Lily Lala, the prince will never be yours, and you will never be queen. Leave court now. What? Who sent you such a mysterious note? And will it threaten your fairy tale ending? Find out in the in the final chapter of the Royal Romance Book One. Okay, this is the last chapter, Chapter Nineteen. Long live the king! On the conclusion of the coronation ball, will you win the prince hand? Huh. Semoga aja. Kalau salah ini tinggal aku sama yang uh, cewek satunya itu, yang mantan 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 tunangannya kakaknya prince-nya ini. Lupa. Lupa namanya. Chapter 19. Long live the king. Spoiler alert, this chapter contains spoiler for rules of engagement book one. Uh, oke. Okay. Rules of engagement. You stare at the letter for a moment. Stun. Uh, huh? Compose yourself, Lady Lara. We are in public. Uh, oh, of course. Are you okay? What does it say? You hold out the letter to Maxwell. Petrain look over his shoulder to read it. Lady Lala. <laughs> the prince will never be yours. And you will never be queen. Leave court now. <sighs> Sound like someone want me out of the way. How dare anyone send a letter like this to a member of our house? It's probably someone plotting against me. I wonder what this person has planned. Whatever it is, I don't intend to let them win. Yeah, no one messes with our Lala. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. 
There is one other thing. Olivia comforted me earlier today. She told I written a threatening note to her. Most interesting, you, Olivia, and Lady Madeleine will be seen as the three favorites still in contention of the crown. If someone are getting the three most likely sweeter to win, then Madeleine may have also been given a note. And if she didn't, it might mean she's the one messing with you and Olivia. Don't get ahead of yourself. It could simply mean that whoever is behind it wants Madeleine to win. Yeah, and no one wants that more than Madeline herself. Yeah, true enough. But then used a handkerchief to pluck the letter out of the Maxwell hand before returning it to him. Maxwell, put this somewhere secure. If you two haven't already whipped away any trace, we may be able to get a fingerprint of it later. Got it. Be right back. Maxwell dashed off with the letter. For now, Lala. You must continue on as though nothing has happened. You think that's that's the best? It could be that distracting you from the ball is exactly what the culprit desire. So that means you should continue to keep up our appearance of enjoying the festive. I suspect this is nothing more than a childish prank, but I'll investigate it. You stay focused on tonight. Tonight and the prince. Patran turns to go. Patran, wait. Earlier you said no one does this to a member of our house. And I stand by that. Well, it just after tonight, if the prince does choose me, I don't will get the moment like this again. There's something I always wanted to know. Why? Why are you always angry at Maxwell? He lacked discipline and responsibility. As a Beaumont, he should know better, but he refused to behave. If he correct his behavior, there'd be no cause for my ear. I'm surprised you haven't thrown him out on the street. Do I look like the type of, of person to disown my brother? Uh, kinda? He's a nuisance. But the only thing worse than financial ruin is familial ruin. What's the point of restoring House Pumon if I cast our family out in the process? Besides, Maxwell will not last a fortnight without me. Oh, he's a good guy, you know. And all grown up, he can take care of himself better than you think. Perhaps. But he'll always be my little brother. So in a way, I don't think I'll ever feel like I can stop looking out for him. Oh, that's actually touching. Yes, well, don't tell him that. Now are we done with the question? Uh, well, one more. But then, uh, what if, what if something bad happened to me? You are a member of House Pumon now. I'll be damned if I let anything happen to you. Besides, you're only step away from being the Queen of Cordonia. And once you have that title and Prince Liam protecting you, you'll be beyond anyone rich. If you do manage to pull this off, I'm actually looking forward to seeing how you'll do as queen. Petren, I hope I don't disappoint you as royalty. As queen, my disappointment will be the least of your worries. I still value your opinion. Well then, as long as you're willing to help out your sponsor every now and then, you'll stave off the worst of my disappointment. I'll be there for you when I can. House Pumon will be in your debt. Well, I'm off to ask around and see if I can discern anything about this idiotic letter. You go socialize and win us a prince. I'm on it. Have I ever disappointed you? Hmm. I realized it the moment it came out of my mouth. Lady Lala. Uh, what? Just... Remember that you have managed to make it this far. Most noble were saying you will not last the first week. You have proven them wrong so far. Was a little more. But then bow to you and head off into the crowd. That was unusually kind of Petrin. Now, I suppose I shall mingle. You search the room, but you don't spot any of your friends. 
then you feel a tap on your shoulder. Hey, I'm back. Oh, you okay? Ah, uh, yeah. This whole letter thing is just a little weird. You look like you could use a break. How about we get out of here for a little while and get some air? But but rent allows to stay and socialize. I know, but it's more important that you're in the right frame of mind for tonight. Besides, we'll stay close. What do you say? It might be the last time we'll really get to hang out before you become queen and all, you know. Okay, okay, Maxwell. Okay, let's go. Take a break. Let's take a break. All right. Maxwell leads you out to the grand staircase. You both climb to the middle landing and sit. Taking a moment, you look back to the ballroom, scanning over the platform where the coronation announcement will be held. That's where the magic will happen. It's amazing to think how far you have come. Would you have thought I would have been standing here on the eve of potentially being selected as Cordonia's future queen? I did. You gotta believe in the person you're sponsoring. Of course, you call it. Oh, Maxwell, you know I did. Though, I have to admit, you have changed a bit since I first saw you in New York. I feel... Not all that different. I'm still the same adorable, talented prince charmer that you found in New York. I think you have kept the good part while developing some new skill. You look like a natural at court now. You'll manage fine without us. Not that I was ever very much help. <sighs> I wish we could have so shower you with gifts and dresses and jewelry. One of the wealthiest houses could have. We will have to serve it. Maxwell, I'm not some spoiled noble. We cannot take care of ourselves. That's true. You are a lot taller than we expected. You have always impressed me. I think you even impressed Petrine too. It's strange to think that soon you will be queen and Petrine and I will go back to being Duke Ramsford and his handsome brother. Will you two be okay? Your finances were not looking great and that was before the social season. With our number one winning lady as queen, we'll be fine. Every house will be clamoring to pay the respect to us, not to mention the sweet business deal that will, that will come with it. The Beaumont name will be restored to its former glory. Okay, but Rain can take a breather. Hell, maybe even a vacation. Hmm. I'll have to pay a royal visit. We cannot have a true Beaumont pass unless all the Beaumonts are there. That includes you. Oh, thank you, Maxwell. Maxwell Lauder faded into a sigh. He scanned over the dancer, swaying across the ballroom. Hey, if there was something wrong, you tell me, right? Of course, I trust you. Maxwell. I know something is wrong with House Pumon. The violence, the train berating you for missing money. Things don't add up. You know, you can trust me. Some secrets aren't mine to tell. Let's leave it at that. It just seems like there are a lot of secrets in House Pimon. Yeah, I guess I can see how it seemed that way. But rain has been wrong a lot. And you? I guess I've been wrong it too. But Petrine takes this stuff a lot harder than I do. After we lost our mom, my dad wasn't exactly the talk about your feeling kind of guy. I'm sorry to hear about your mom. It was a long time ago. I just think we all, I just think we all kind of try to deal in our own way. And Petrine was to shut everyone out. It's been really nice having a lady in house few months again. I think you've actually gotten Petrine to open up a little. This is Petrine opening up? Eh, you can imagine what it's like normally. 
I shudder to think. I really miss having you as part of our house, you know. When you're queen, I want to be there to wake you up every morning. No more dragging you around to put on dresses. No more limo rides with the trans judging stare. Ha <laughs> I'll miss you. We're all going to miss you. Even the trend. Really? As much as he possibly can without straining himself. Maxwell rubbed the stair banister. Before the announcement, let's do one last wild thing. Such as? This railing happened to look perfect for sliding. Uh, uh, let's do it. Uh, is, is that safe? We need to time it so we reach the bottom at the same time. And then we strike a pose. Let's do it. On three, one, two, three. You and Maxwell slide down the railing together. Woo! Yay! You both jump off at the bottom and strike a pose. We look so badass right now. This room doesn't know what hit them. If only we had sunglasses, this place would not have been able to take how awesome we are. Maxwell smiled and then sighed. It's been fun, Lala. A lot more fun than expected. Thanks for that. Maxwell hold out his face. Oh. Let's kiss him on the cheek, man. You place your cheek against his and kiss the other. There, a social smooch. Call me of court. Maxwell looked back into the ballroom, smiling. Hey, can I ask you a question? Ask me anything. Maxwell, are we, are we still going to be fine if I'm not the Claire Queen? I mean, I know I'm only really here as the sweeter for House Beaumont, and one way or another, that's about to end. Oh, and so you're wondering if we just kick you to the curb if you're not crowned tonight? <sighs> kind of. Of course not. You're one of my best friends, Lala. Maybe my best friend, actually, now that I think about it. Maxwell. Anyway, what I mean is, of course, Petra and I really, really, really hope you become queen. I mean... I think Petrain might murder me if you don't. But as far as I'm concerned, win or lose, you're still part of House Piemont. And I never just kick you out of our life. Oh, Maxwell leans back against the wall and runs his finger through his hair, looking away from you. You chill out with Maxwell. Well, it's getting late. I hope this made you feel better. Work like a charm. Ready to get back in there? Maxwell, I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Then let's do it. Maxwell, take your hand and place it on his arm, then lead you back into the ballroom. Upon returning to the ballroom, a ranguish, roquishly handsome man approach you and Maxwell. Hello, my lady, Lord Maxwell. Uh, Leo, the two exchange a brave hook. Where have you been? Oh, you know it is. One moment you're off wandering Christian ruins, then you end up on a cruise in the Mediterranean. But that's a sorry for another time. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, your grace, please just leave. Uh, uh, Leo, are you an old friend of Maxwell? You could say that. We go way back. He was my partner in crime at our Piemont's parties. You cannot aim a bow to shave to save your life, but you're a decent at choosing. As I recall, we never had the chance to break our tie. You're lucky we cannot have that match now. I'm not here to steal the limelight. This is Prince Liam even. If you don't have a title, then we'll let you into the Piemont's parties. Being part of the royal family has its spurt, I guess. Like getting into exclusive pole. Leo give you a playful wing. That, that must mean you're... 
Leos, the former, cro the former crown prince of Cordonia, and half brother to our beloved Prince Liam. Ah, I'm surprised you didn't lead with that. It's better if people don't know. I want others to care about my former title as much as I do, which is not at all. Besides, Leo is a perfectly fine title. It's with me. Uh, so... Uh, uh, aku, what should I choose? Former crown title or why did you come back? Uh, why did you come back? I may, I may not have liked my title, but I love my brother. I'm here for him. My father told my presence will reinforce my support for Liam taking the crown. And plus, I could not let him get engaged without me. Just then, Madeline woke up and joined the circle. Aduh, Madeline. Ini mantan tunangannya Madeline, cuy. Mantan tunangannya Madeline. Leo, darling. How fortunate you found the time to join us. Madeline, you know I will not miss my brother coronation. Ah, I'm glad there's, re there's remain a few sentiment that will make you return to court. Your brother will be elated to know you're watching him choose Cordonia's future queen. I hear you're one of the potential brides again. Cordonia has lovingly granted me another chance to be her queen. Maxwell will bow you and whisper, Hey, this could be your change to see if Madeline got a note. I mean, she might not tell you, but you could ask. Uh, hey Madeline. Uh, have you received any correspondence tonight? Correspondence? No, I had quite enough on my hand with the Paul tonight. I'm afraid I haven't had time for a letter tonight. No, it was a pleasure seeing you three, but you have to excuse me. Of course. Take care. Madeline makes her way past Leo and rejoins the crone. What was that all about? Uh, it's nothing. Just trying to get to the bottom of a mystery. This court never liked for mystery. Uh, not a mystery, but drama, Leo. Drama. It seemed like there were not any hard feeling between you and Madeline. Yeah. Trust Madeline to handle everything gracefully, even running into her former fiancé. So, Leo, how, how did you end up engaged to her? Madeline and I had known each other since childhood, to the point where there were talk of an early betrothal, betrothal between our family, but it never went through. However, it made her a favorite during the last social season, and due to the politics of a public courtship system, she won. That's how I ended up engaged to a woman I had no romantic feeling for. Uh, I'm sorry, you went wrong that. Tapi kasihan juga sih, Madeline. It was just another trapping of courtly life. I wasn't really having my future decided for me. But the engagement ended, ended when I... Abdicate. Everything's been better since then. Uh, that's good, I guess. Because of that experience, I desperately hope Liam chose someone he loved. Uh, I do too. I was able to break off my engagement, but he may not be able to do that. He's the well-behaved one. Yeah, he's never really let loose at party before. From what I've heard, Lady Lala been good for him in that regard. Hmm. Liam never let things go too far. It's true. The difference between me and him is that he come back for his morning duties. Try ditching your security detail and disappearing for court, from court for weeks at a time. What, Leo? Wow. Uh, you must have been a bad influence. Thankfully, I didn't rub off on him too much, just enough to foster a rebellious charm. In truth, I couldn't have asked for a better brother. It's fitting he's the one to take over the throne. I would have been downright irresponsible, and quite frankly, 
It's better for everyone this way. Cordonia will be well served by him. We're lucky to have him. And hopefully he's lucky enough to have you. I uh, have kind of you to say. I can see what I see in you. Uh, well, thank you. No, thank you for being there for my brother when I was sent. Leo, what are, you what, are you, what are you telling Lady Lala about me now? Nothing too embarrassing, I hope. Good thing, only brother. Truthfully, there's nothing else to tell. Leo claps Liam on the back and pulls him into an embrace. It's been, it's been far too long. If I, if I could see you without all of this. Leo goes through the ballroom and the nobles. Trust me, I'll be home a lot more often, little brother. <sighs> Just know that you're more than welcome anytime you'd like to drop in. You always know how to make me feel at home. But as happy as I am to see you, now that we've got a rare moment to yourself, I want to make sure you're putting your time to its best use. Huh? What's that mean? It means that you... And now she'll go investigate the appetizer, Maxwell. Oh, I already ate. I mean, we should go investigate the appetizer. As in, and leave these two with some type. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Well, I can always eat more. Perfect. Lady Lala, it was my profound pleasure to meet you. Liam, love you too, big brother. Leo claps Liam on the shoulder and then walk off with Maxwell. Liam turns to you smiling. Uh, Oke okay, teman-teman, sampai di sini dulu uh, Choices Royal Romance. If you like my video, you can click like, subscribe, donate, comment, whatever you want. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!